Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this installment of the Corbell webinar series. We're very pleased to have with us today Michelle Meyerhover from BBMRI Eric, which is going to take us through the BBMRI LC services across the nodes and the biomedical science research infrastructures. My name is Vera Matzer, and I'm involved in the Corbell project on behalf of Envil EBI, and I'll host today's webinar. I'll also be manning the question function. Now, before I introduce our speaker, I want to make you aware of the fact that the webinar is being recorded. That will include the question and answer session that we'll have at the end. We'll make both the video and the slides available on the Corbell YouTube channel and the Corbell website. We've reserved some time at the end for our questions. And what I'd like you to do is please, during the webinar or after the webinar, um, write your questions and to go to webinar application and you can see that on the screen here and then we'll go through them at the end. Now Corbell is an Horizon 2020 funded project and it bring, brings together the 13 research infrastructures in the biomedical science. Corbell aims to transform the understanding of bio, biological mechanisms and help translate them into medical care. Modern biological and biomedical research involves very complex projects and often um, they need to combine a variety of different technologies and operate at the interface between different disciplines. Corbell is aimed to help these projects by harmonizing access and services for research that involves more than one research infrastructure. Corbell will actually finish at the end of May and this is one of the last few webinars that we'll be running through this project. So today's presenter is Michaela Meyerhofer. She's a political scientist and historian by training. She was educated in Vienna, nouvelle neuve Essex and Paris. In 2010, she earned her PhD from both the École des études et sciences sociales and the University of Vienna, which was shortlisted by the Austrian Society for Political Science for the best thesis in 2010. Prior to her involvement in BBMR and ERIC, she was investigator in several national and international research projects, focusing on the politics of biotechnology and the life sciences, especially in the governance of biobanks. Her academic career led her to various positions at the Centre de Recherche Médecines, Sciences, Santé et Société, the University of Vienna, the Institute of Science, Technology and Society, studies at Alpen Adria Universität in Klagenfurt, Vienna Graz, the Technical University of Vienna and the Medical University of Graz. Today, she is head of the LC Services and Research and interim co-director of BBMRI ERIC. She also coordinates the Code of Conduct for Health Research Initiative. And at this point, I'm going to hand over to Michaela. It is a pleasure uh, giving again uh, a webinar in the Corbell series, and uh, that's also a chance to quickly reintroduce what uh, BBMRI ERIC stands for. And uh, we have an inside joke here that is that um, BBMRI, um, as it is ERIC, as it is quite difficult to pronounce, if you can say it without stumbling, you can become a member. So BBMRI ERIC is the biobanking, biomolecular research infrastructure under the ERIC uh, legal framework and focuses uh, on biobanks and biomolecular resources for the benefit uh, of biobankers, researchers, um, the industry. So aims for engagement with academia um, and industry partners as well as patients and citizens. Obviously, the uh, activities are deeply embedded in the work of the life sciences research infrastructures. And uh, within Corbell, and as a follow up, then EOSC Life, we can uh, continue our activities, uh, especially on um, LC, which I present today. The ELC Services and Research Unit supports the biobanking and life science research infrastructures community by facilitating compliance with regulatory requirements, best practices, standards, on ethical, legal and societal questions, and 
uh, conducting research in order to provide these services and trainings. When uh, you go to the BBMRI ERIC website uh, and then select under services and support, LC services and research, you then uh, come to the overview page uh, defining research services and training as the three core columns that constitute the LC services and research unit. The presentation today focuses on the LC services in particular and then rounds it up how research and training activities fit in. I will start with the LC help desk. The LC help desk um, aims at uh, providing information that uh, one might have in relation to transnational research, especially uh, when it comes to biobanking or uh, concerns, uh, GDPR issues, um, the Nagoya protocol across of interest across research infrastructures. For this, um, we have uh, the LC help desk directly at the BBMRI headquarter, where primi primarily the questions come in. And uh, if we can help you on the spot, we do that right away. If it is a more complex question that concerns two or more countries, we will bring it to our editorial board that consists uh, of experts coming from uh, the 21 member countries of BBMRI ERIC. If the question concerns a specific country, um, I mentioned here uh, for the sake uh, of this presentation only Belgium and the Czech Republic, we will make the connection to the individual either help desk or uh, individual expert. Additionally, we believe that um, any LC help desk um, should know what uh, they can provide and what others are already providing. And here uh, we have our colleagues from Meatris. When a question concerns pharmaceutical regulatory affairs, um, we make the link to Eatris where they provide the specific regulatory expertise. Equally so, um, I would like to mention that within our countries, um, the national nodes of BBMRI are organized differently. And again, just picking two examples, we have our colleagues in Italy that have um, a very active LC help desk um, and the contact is also listed on the website. Whereas our colleagues in UK do not have a specific um, biobank and national note help desk, simply because it's not needed as they have the excellent services of the MRC, with which we equally um, have an agreement in order to direct the um, questions that concern the UK directly there. So how does it work in detail? If you have emailed us an LC help desk, um, you will, uh, it will be addressed and reviewed by our team. Most of the questions that come um, in to the LC help desk concern uh, legal or ethical requirements, and we take them case by case. Who is the service for? It is available to researchers and biobanks located in our member and observer countries, as well as our partner research infrastructures working in the field of the life sciences. What happens after we responded? Um, if a question that has been answered is of interest uh, to a broader community, we aim obviously with um, abstracting any personal and confident confidential details, um, further information in the LC knowledge base. To some extent, uh, our how-to guides and uh, FAQs or glossary came into being because of that. What the LC Help Desk is definitely not, is it is not legal advice. Um, we provide legal guidance um, in matters that might help for research projects, might help to find the right vocabulary um, to talk to your own legal departments, um, as well as um, guidance in order 
uh, to execute research projects in terrains that are new. Returning to uh, the services, I would like now to focus on the LC knowledge base. When going deeper into the knowledge base, uh, you see that it is uh, currently a uh, link of uh, a section of categories, glossary and FAQs, templates and agreements, how-to guides, public consultation, GDPR, um, has been given a specific section, legal and ethical instruments in terms of legal texts that are out there, binding and non-binding um, are listed here. Specific section on ethics, especially in relation to what is required uh, in H 2020 projects and um, the one or other um, workshop reports. Currently, you can um, click, for instance, on templates and agreements up and you have a selection um, from uh, existing templates and agreements, uh, several on informed consent, material data transfer agreements, but as well uh, linking to other innovation uh, help desk templates that fall under the same category. So you see the logic of uh, the knowledge base. We provide either material um, that already is out there, link it and make it available uh, and easier to find. Or um, if it comes out of a research project, um, I mentioned Corbel here and uh, the colleagues of Ecran were in the lead to provide an informed consent matrix specifically for clinical trials. This uh, document of, informed, of the informed consent matrix provides a guiding document that allows to easier put together what uh, should be included in um, the informed consent for clinical trials. For the sake of time, I will just um, mention one example for uh, an MTA DTA template. Um, here, uh, the rare disease RD Connect uh, MTA DTA. Um, where uh, at the end of the project, the deliverable was to come up with the template, where, which you can now find in our knowledge base as well. BBMRI believes that, uh, especially when it comes to templates, a lot of templates are uh, already in existence. And here it is very often much more beneficial to A, allow here to have a good collection and selection of templates, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, constantly reviewed as well as extended. And additionally, where new information is needed, um, or guides such as glossaries or FAQs to make it on our own. So only when requested from the community, for instance, um, an LC help this question comes in, do you have something on this repeatedly? Um, nothing can be found uh, in, uh, within our network through Google search um, in the collaborations we have with other projects and initiatives, we will make a new document. We did so with uh, a how-to guide on biobank governance that built on a survey that we uh, could execute again in the research project in the context of Adopt PBMRI. Now, what was uh, again the logic of setting up this help desk? Um, in, con uh, in setting up this knowledge base, in contrast to the LC help desk, uh, it provides customized support. That, uh, and here, um, the knowledge base is available on a self-serve basis on the web. We conceptualize the LC knowledge base on several ethical, legal, and societal guidance tools that are already out there uh, and available, and wanted to make it distinct from the project lifespan that uh, typically um, a tool um, is set up. So one project starts, um, a fantastic tool begins. It's very useful for this uh, purpose of the project, but then mostly due to the uh, limited resources, um, the results end. When we are partners of a specific project, we aim 
uh, to ensure the sustainability of uh, the deliverables and findings within the knowledge base beyond the project lifespan, um, as well as I said before, whenever we identify um, a gap of information that is not out there, to provide a hands-on practical guidance via the LC Help Desk, custom based, and B, make this knowledge generally available to all free of charge through the LC knowledge base. Returning again um, and looking at the third service that we provide, this would be the ethics check. The ethics check uh, we started um, when we built our BBMRI um, directory and the, um, that provides a good overview of what uh, resources are available in our member countries as regards to biobanks and collections. However, it moved uh, to something um, much more and different in the sense that we aim to give um, support during the application phase of EU-funded research projects. As you well know, there is the compulsory ethics self-assessment component and experienced researchers know quite well how to complete that. Less experienced researchers um, or fresh uh, at the start in the proposal reality are frequently unaware and often do not know about the guidance documents that the EU provides. And here um, we offer uh, to check this section, not to write it, but again to give guidance on the ethics component in the proposal prior to submission. For this, we ask for the full proposal complement um, complemented ethics issue table uh, and the ethics section in part B of the proposal. Again, we are not writing it, but we provide guidance in the sense of we help you to help yourself. We see that uh, this is one of our most uh, used services and uh, very often in the reality, and of course the researchers that come to us are um, again fairly new to the uh, project inquiries. So come to us very often relatively late um, in time for us to provide input. This has also shown us that education and training activities are needed especially when it comes to European Commission guidance document, how to complete our, your ethics self-assessment, which provides an excellent first start. Um, and we want to break this down uh, in collaboration with other experts who have themselves experience as reviewers to the Commission uh, of the ethics uh, self-assessment sections. In order to guide um, and also make the life of uh, everybody easier and promote a better understanding of what uh, is concerned with ethics in relation to uh, Horizon, especially Horizon 2020 projects, but not limited to these. Returning again to the overview page, um, you can now see that the services that we provide um, Team and live from um, research and training. So the research projects we are involved in um, feed us with new information, uh, the state of the art developments, and uh, whatever the outcome, we integrate them in either the services and or trainings. There we have the LC webinars and uh, certain LC training courses. Here I would like to highlight um, that obviously um, we apply the same logic as within, um, within Corbell and the LC knowledge base. That is um, the LC webinars that might be interesting and were provided by um, another uh, collaboration, another project, another initiative will also be um, linked in with the right acknowledgements, obviously, in the LC webinars. 
whatever does the trick to spread the good knowledge that it is out there um, is the way to go forward. Now, I'm already at uh, the end of my presentation and uh, can conclude with four take home messages what the ELSA Services and Research Unit does. It connects existing services and help desks for the benefit of the user. Um, as we have seen in a Corbel service that we did at uh, the first couple of months uh, into the project, that the users of such help desks in the end do not care where they find the information, whether it's from project A or B, but that the information is a correct one, the right one, um, easy to find. If an information is already provided at an existing service and help desk, let's go for it. If we promote each other, we can only win. There is no need to reinvent the wheel anew. Second, um, it identifies knowledge and information gaps that comes in either through the research projects, through the trainings, the questions that are asked, also through this webinar, um, questions that you might have uh, at the end and we cannot yet answer on the spot, um, will be something that we will eventually work on and provide then um, either in another webinar or um, in a document as a straightforward answer, FAQ, how to guide or the like. It needs thirdly to ensure user friendliness. This also means <clears throat> that the LC services are a constant work in progress. And um, we are already working in the background to make the knowledge base more user friendly that you can search um, with uh, the right keywords to find the information that you're looking for without uh, actually clicking through the various categories, but simply uh, as a Google search uh, through the right keywords. Ultimately, um, the way we proposed forward um, aims to guarantee accuracy because we know what is requested from the community. We know what uh, excellent um, templates are out there and uh, we aim for sustainability as a research infrastructure beyond uh, the, with the core functionality beyond um, the duration of a specific research project. With this, I can already thank you for um, your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Michaela. Um, if people would like to add their questions to the question function, then we'll go through a few of them. So while you do that, um, I will um, I will that gives you the chance to add your questions to the panel. So one of the questions that um, was submitted in advance is how fast are the replies in the LC help desk? Um, I can reply as an honorary lawyer here. That is, it depends. If it is a simple question, and um, a lot of times it is, um, we can reply within um, 24 hours um, if it requires a bit of a search within a couple of days. Um, because in most of the cases, we are um, aware where to find guidance documents. Um, if we have not thought yet of putting it uh, on our knowledge base, we will put it after answering the specific request. Um, if it is now a more complicated one, say um, I have a research project in these countries, uh, I need to know uh, what the legal requirements are. We aim not to uh, send legal texts out, but uh, we aim to find out uh, what, um, to go a little bit into deeper, what the actual case is, where the problem is. Um, and uh, if it is then indeed uh, a legal and or ethical problem, we connect with our colleagues in the respective countries um, and aim for a combined answer. 
if it needs to go even further um, into details, then um, this is either discussed uh, not only by email, but also in our editorial board. Um, and um, we can see that there is a ratio one to three. Um, what do I mean by that? If, say, um, the question is a straightforward one and um, it takes us one hour uh, to reply to it, then uh, it very often took us three hours to find out what exactly the, the question is, simply because um, ethical and legal concerns that are not so straightforward um, require this dialogue to find um, the, to identify what actually the problem is or problems, and then to propose solutions. Okay, thank you. We have another question. Are any of the LC services available to the biobanking communities in countries that are not yet members of BBMRI, Eric? Because the knowledge of the existence of such great help can be very frustrating for those biobankers who cannot get access through no fault of their own. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, we are uh, very open to those if we have uh, resources um, to reply to them. And so far we do, uh, we do our best to, to comply. Okay, thank you. That's good to know. Then the next question is, could you tell us a bit more about the LC policy monitoring? This is mentioned mm -hmm. in the summary of the webinar. Mm -hmm. Um, the LC policy, uh, policy monitoring um, focuses currently in particular on the former Working Party 29, uh, EDPB, EDPS uh, guidance notes. And uh, one uh, colleague from our LC team um, aims to comply uh, with a joint answer um, that represents our member countries whenever we can. and. We are also engaging with other organizations um, of whom we know that they are replying to a similar requests um, and see if there may be joint uh, positions. Um, to, I do not want to comment on any uh, running activities, but one activity in the past was when uh, still the Working Party 29 uh, issued the first guidelines on consent. Um, we could uh, get the opinions from most of our member countries. We could uh, show the similarities and differences in opinion. And with this, have one document turned in to the Working Party 29, um, representing 21 member countries. And for me, that uh, showed really the uh, strength of the of the initiative. We do uh, know that depending on how well the national nodes are organized, they are um, also turning in their own national opinions, um, as this typically involves um, a highly complex engagement of stakeholders or a, at minimum a large group of national stakeholders as well. Um, we uh, encourage them uh, to tell us what they turned in, in order to also be able to reference it uh, to um, any policy service that could be WHO, OECD, um, uh, but the key focus remains with European um, EDPB at the moment. Thank you. Then one other question we have is, what sort of questions do you generally get on the help desk? Mm. Um, the easy ones, uh, seemingly easy ones, uh, are, can you explain the GDPR uh, to us? Um, here, um, we send them basic informations that are now out there, um, reference some papers. Um, for a long time, we, sh we shared our own uh, FAQs, uh, but those are outdated now as they relate to the GDPR while it still was in the making. And um, would then ask um, to specify the question. Um, other questions that come in, um, 
quite often is we have uh, here this biobank project um, we have uh, this uh, guidance note or um, our thinking of engaging with uh, stakeholders would you have best practice examples um, how this is done in other countries here we aim to make the connection as we believe that uh, especially the sharing of best practices um, papers if they're available and in particular the contact of the people who were involved in making it happen does the trick. Okay, thank you. We have a follow-up question to the LC policy monitoring to saying that um, the answer isn't very clear. Um, mm. And she could, following up to say, does it mean that the service tries to help um, make policies more equal in the EU? Um, let me allow allow me to go briefly to the website. What we aim uh, is definitely to make the um, voice of the biobankers heard stronger and uh, this BBMRI can ensure in that sense is that we can go to the European uh, bodies and say we are um, a research infrastructure under the ERIC legal framework. We represent uh, 21 member countries. These are uh, the voices from them. So um, we organize as much as we can collaborative and joint responses to whenever there are public consultations out there. And the most uh, current one uh, that is available is, for instance, um, the guideline uh, 220 of Article 46 on transfers of personal, personal data between the EEA and non-EEA public authorities or bodies. We uh, aim to influence uh, in that sense policy in the making uh, always in the interest and what uh, is voiced from the community so if we can from bbmri to stimulate the discussion we uh, aimed for instance with the consent guidelines as it was done on rather short notice um, with a suggestion saying dear national nodes these uh, are the things that our LC unit has identified as critical. Do you agree to that? Do you have uh, additional national concerns? Let us know. We will um, ensure that this gets heard um, at uh, the European bodies, at the EDPB in this case. I hope I was clearer now and I'm ready for follow-up questions if needed. Thank you. We'll first take another one and then we'll see if um, if it comes back. Um, and yes, apparently the answer was much clearer, so thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So the next question, first of all, says thank you for the presentation. And then how do you coordinate with universities or organizations, legal departments, of BBMRI users? Does BBMRI adopt global policies, code of conduct and best practices on LC for their members? Thank you. Um. I will give first a short answer and then elaborate uh, on it. Um, the short answer is not now, but eventually, because especially in collaborating with legal departments from university would require far more resources than we currently have available. What uh, we aim for is uh, the direct connection with the national nodes and um, within one uh, project in particular, within BBMRI ERIC, we have um, gained uh, some experience in collaborating with um, legal departments. So um, BBMRI ERIC in the context of the research project adopt BBMRI puts together the uh, CRC colon cancer cohort um, that consists of uh, data sets in various biobanks uh, across Europe and that is additional information to what uh, is uh, per se in our BBMRI directory. Also for this um, 
putting these cohorts together, we um, needed to um, make the link and propose uh, a data transfer agreement um, and um, making us joint controllers with uh, several universities that ho typically were hosting the collections and or the data sets of the um, colon cancer cohort. And say 200 uh, data sets were then um, linked to BBMRI and in total um, 10,000 were coming together. In order to make that happen, um, we engaged in a process of several months. Um, and for each organization and university, it took us um, ideally a couple of days. Um, typically, when the people concerned collaborating with one another already knew each other, um, whereas with others who were not even aware of the existence of an organization called BBMRI, um, we needed the first couple of weeks um, to make ourselves known. And once we had the right people to talk to, um, it worked faster. Now, the learning experience is um, something that uh, we have not yet um, transmitted to uh, the knowledge base, but is an internal knowledge as of BBMRI that in the future we can make this faster. And um, whatever um, whatever the situation is um, in order to allow for collaboration in order for going towards a, a good conduct um, you need to invest serious amount of time in making it happen and we see it um, in our code of conduct initiative that um, is developing far, far slower than um, we would have hoped for, because there's so much groundwork um, that needs to be done. So we thought we could get to the moon before knowing um, in which direction we would find it, if you allow me this analogy. Um, closing here on a positive note, um, what we see is whenever um, a dialogue, the right wording, um, helps, then the time frame uh, for a couple of weeks um, can be shortened. I do not believe that templates alone do the trick, but um, I believe that raising awareness in the mid-run of uh, the benefit of joint templates, eventually engaging in a process to uh, making joint agreements, making um, joint templates is definitely worth the effort and has to go uh, also beyond uh, project consortia and should be an organizational one. Okay, thank you. We have one last question, which is how many questions do you receive per year? Um, for the ethics check, um, it is about um, 20 per year um, with a high peak always shortly uh, two, three weeks before uh, the proposal deadlines. Um, when it comes to the LC help desk, um, it is about a dozen that uh, we have at uh, BBMRI headquarters and about the three times more um, that we um, pitch directly to uh, the national expert. So from that, we also see that most of the questions are, that are coming in concern uh, one or two countries in particular where the involvement of um, BBMRI, Eric, is not needed. And with this, um, I think I can also share um, our mantra, cut out the middleman wherever you can. The middleman in this case uh, would be us when it requires a direct uh, national expert. Okay, thank you very much. That was um, oh, literally, as I was about to say, last question. I think um, one more came through. <laughs> Please. So I'm just checking because it came through the chat channel. So um, this person is involved um, in another project. 
and works at the uh, Dutch LC services. Um, but um, wonders whether the ERN um, is not particularly familiar with LC work and whether there is more work to be done, I'm guessing, in spreading the word. Oh, yes. And therefore, uh, we will have before the summer, unfortunately, not uh, as a face to face meeting, but uh, as a virtual meeting, um, a get together from the various help desks in uh, exactly tackling this question. And um, I'm excited to share that um, we'll soon have an LC services officer again responsible um, for making that happen. The colleague uh, who was responsible is on parental leave and the new colleague can start 1st of May and then we can speed up things again. Okay, brilliant. Um, so in that case, um, we're going to end it there for today. I'd like to thank everyone for attending and Michaela, you for presenting. Thank you very much. Um, so normally I present the next webinar at this point, um, but because um, Corbell will be ending at the end of May, the one that's left is um, a more in-depth session on kind of training and communication, which is a follow up to the joint Corbell ESC Life webinar series that's been running in the last couple of weeks. You can find details of that one in the, um, on the website, but that one will not be publicly posted. So um, this one is the last one that we'll be uploading to the Corbell webinar. So I'd like to thank you all very much. The webinars will remain available in um, the Corbell webinar in the Corbell website as long as that's live. We'll make sure that there is a link um, through to the YouTube channel also on the new Life Science RI website. So thank you very much for attending.